So knowing your workforce is vitally important. Understanding that you've got baby boomers, Generation X, Millennials and Generation Zs um, inside of your organization will help you build the proper communication strategy in order to get collateral and content out to these specific users to enable them on the new platform that you are deploying and migrating to um, from either an existing tenant and there are some like for like examples there um, that are important to communicate or from a legacy system into uh, Office 365. So you, the scope of the workforce will generally define which workloads are adopted quickly in your organization. Um, so you, uh, to enable a more engaged approach. And then based on what you can see in the specific slide, you'll see there that there are preferences. So 2020 definitely changed a lot of the way that these users interact with each other across the different generations. Everybody working at home um, and having a lot of change fatigue because there's been a lot of change, a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. Um, and also having the lack of, uh, the lack of office based uh, and informal Q&A advocacy around these changes. You've got to build these models into the technology platforms to allow the users to engage with each other um, to understand what's happening during the migration process. So change management activities are key to the successful migrations because user adoption is definitely at the forefront of the productivity and the reason why you would generally be doing this migration. So in a, let's, let's use a like for like example. You're moving from one tenant to another tenant. So you would think that it'd be a pretty smooth transition and generally there is, uh, there is quite a smooth transition for the user we're not talking about the migration itself or how, how the, the back end works of that but from a user perspective they don't have to necessarily use any new platform they're going to continue to use the same platform however there might be policy changes on your new tenant that did not exist on the previous tenant when of the previous business that you might have acquired during a, an acquisition as an example one of those is external sharing you might have allowed external sharing before, and as Chris and Johan have discussed um, uh, throughout this presentation, that there's quite a lot of to do in the security and governance space and adapt and adopt and change, make, uh, give you the capability um, to change a couple of things uh, during this migration process. So you might have uh, allowed users to share data or content previously, and now they're, they're not allowed to share uh, data or content in OneDrive or Teams, as an example. And that's a big impact on the users. So communicating that correctly to the users is vitally important helping them understand why that has happened and how they can work around that and what the new uh, way of working is, is exceptionally important to allow them to continue to be productive and not be adherent to not wanting to use a new platform or not wanting to be as productive because they feel that things have been taken away from them. So let's talk a bit about quickly creating some change management and adoption strategies um, and how we do that. So there is some um, you can do a couple of things like internal email campaigns showing the users what is to come you can do things like uh, creation of a community for users create a q a uh, in teams because it's a very wide used platform you can do it in yammer and sharepoint as well if you want to to allow users to go and ask other users questions um, you could do things like sending out helpful tips uh, on how to use specific workloads for collaboration those things are not so important enabling your users uh, you can do things like talking up front about these new policies and these like for like migrations, right? So why is it changed? What's the reason for that? And you can communicate that to them. You can assign workload champions or power users, as we like to call them, to help struggling users and alleviate that pressure off of IT. IT are busy with the migration. They're busy with a lot of context and content and moving that across and making sure everything moves across according to plan. And in that specific process, you can assign these work, these workload champions or power users and get the users to interact with them and how to get them to help the users use the new technology platforms or enable uh, help enable them in a better way and alleviate that pressure off of IT. So we have built this um, user run book and it's it stemmed from complex migrations and uh, that we've done in the past, like notice notes to exchange. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to hand over to Jan to do that. But before I do that, I was going to talk to you a little bit about the pre-migration considerations in this factor, and that's why this user runbook is exceptionally important because it helps us build a communication plan. We can do communication based on uh, the, as you can see per the image here, we can do things like T minus 16 weeks to completion of migration. We can start sending out to specific AD groups um, the type of communication plan based on that. But as part of that, we also build in these pre-migration pre considerations. And what is that? Well, things like um, considering if you want to necessarily have a pilot phase to your migration strategy. Pilot testing is one of the most important pre-migration factors. 
It allows you the opportunity to test the throughputs, new data structures, permissions, and remediate all of that prior to doing the migration. Once you have that all in place and you actually then start the migration, the transition from the one tenant to another tenant or one specific legacy platform to Office 365, um, uh, it will allow a very smooth transition because you've tested everything, you know it's going to work, you know how it's going to look in the end. And those pilot uh, phases are exceptionally important in allowing you to do that as well. And, that, and then you could also do things like considering a phased approach. Phased approaches in a migration are very important because they design the migration approach and it will also Con you also then consider the impact of the users in the day to day function. You will build it all into this runbook and you will be able to then use this to actually manage the migration process. We use and we recommend most organizations use a similar process when they are progressing through a tenant to tenant migration. And our runbook process was born out of really complex migrations we often did before, um, especially notes to exchange migrations. Those are natively very complex migrations that require a detailed communication plan, not only for marketing the change of platform, because notes to exchange is a big change from an end user's perspective, but also detailing all the steps that the end user will need to complete as part of the migration journey. And if the users don't complete the required steps, they, their success uh, will not be as good as the user that followed those steps and they'll have data missing in ex their exchange mailboxes as part of those um, specific migration scenarios. So we recommend that you utilize a runbook um, and develop a runbook as part of your initial planning and piloting or, uh, and testing of your migration to your new tenant. And the runbook is built to trigger specific activities in a countdown fashion uh, that leads up to the actual migration or cutover for the wave of users. So for example, T-16 will trigger a, a communication, email-based communication to the end users with a link to a, an instructional video of what Exchange is and what Exchange Online is and what changes they will encounter as part of the migration. And as you progress to further down the runbook, certain end user activities might be triggered in T-14. And um, for example, they might be required to stop making changes to their home folders for a specific period of time. So the runbook is really built for, for and to handle complex communication requirements and ensuring you've got all the activities tracked and listed and ensure that the automated communication is triggered at the right time to the end users. And it also keeps track of the technical steps that the migration team will be required to complete uh, in the back end before and during the migration to ensure that the users being completed on that target date is complete um, in lead up to the, the cut of a migration. 